Yo sup, this is MY3. Today we're gonna be playing a bit of catch up and go over some of the off theme support that Yang Zing has been getting in the past six months. These are mostly engines of archetypes from other decks. These engines individually didn't really have enough content for me to make a full video about it, which is why I kind of left it till now that there's several engines to talk about. I can compile all of them into this one video. The only engine I've really talked about previously on this channel would be the Speedroid engine, which featured in many of my Dinglong combo videos, since Terratop is a one card Dinglong with the red eye dice. Uh, Terratop with the Tatacon Borg is a one card rank 3 without using your normal summon. Uh, recently, with the release of Zodiacs, that would most likely be MX Saber Invoker to get into your Zodiac engine. Drawing these together and using Terratop to search the last piece also has some pretty good interactions which I have shown previously on my channel. So if you're interested in how the speedroids mesh into a Yangzing deck, you can go and find some of my older videos which shows the combos involving them. But as for the first engine I wanted to talk about is the DD engine. Now this engine is another one card thing long engine. Typically, this engine composes of three copies of Dark Contract with the Gate, DD Lamia and DD7 Corpinicus. Dark Contract with the Gate being your one card thing long. As for how this combo goes, it's quite simple. You just need to open the Dark Contract with the Gate. So you activate Dark Contract with the Gate and use its effect to search a DD monster once per turn. Use it to search DD7 Copernicus. Normal summon DD7 Copernicus. Its effect allows you to send a DD or a contract card from your deck to the graveyard. So we're going to send DD Lamia into the graveyard. And then we use DD Lamia's effect to send Dark Contract with the Gate from the field to the graveyard to special summon herself from the graveyard. And that's a level 1 tuner and a level 4 non tuner to synchro into Dinglong. DD Lamia gets banished, which we can later put back with. Cyframe Lord Omega. If we want, that would make our second and third copies of Contract with the Gate a free level 1 tuner special summon instead of being dead cards. DD7 Copernicus go goes to the extra deck, which is not relevant unless you're running generic scales such as Metaphors, in which case you can Pendulum summon it back out as many times as you want. It can deck thin by dumping the additional copies of Dark Contract with the Gate from your deck to the graveyard, as well as being a level 4 pendulum monster for you to synchro with. You can make some cool things such as Ignis the Prominence or even DDD Siegfried. Now the next engine I want to talk about, which is also the main engine I wanted to talk about in this video, would be the Dinosaur engine. So the Dinosaur engine composes of these four cards mainly. Now the main card you want to be maxing out on, no matter what, would be Fossil Dig. Fossil Dig lets you search any level 6 or lower dinosaur from your deck, so you can search any of these guys directly. There's absolutely no point on not maxing out on this card. The next card, Soul Eating Oviraptor, is the one card thing long, utilizing Miscellaneousaurus and Jurak Aeolo. So these three are our main combo pieces. Since Soul Eating Oviraptor, upon normal or special summon, can search our deck for any dinosaur, we can also run some nice tech options outside of these three main combo pieces, such as the Extender Gillosaurus. So, the basic interaction between the dinosaurs and Yang Zings would be opening the Soul Eating Oviraptor or the Fossil Dig to get to the Soul Eating Oviraptor. So, normal summon. Oviraptor, this searches us Miscellaneousaurus, activate Miscellaneousaurus's effect from the hand. To make all of our dinosaurs immune to pretty much everything during the main phase 1, it's an added bonus. It is also a quick effect that can be activated on either player's main phase, so its protection ability can be chained to cards if needed. But the main reason for Miscellaneousaurus is so that we can banish him from the graveyard. He can banish himself along with any number of dinosaur monsters to special summon a dinosaur from the deck whose level is equal to the number of dinosaurs we banished. 
Here we banish just one, so we're going to summon a level 1 dinosaur. The level 1 dinosaur we're going to summon is Drac Aeolo, who is a level 1 tuner. So level 1 tuner and level 4 non-tuner makes our ding long. As for how to proceed from this point out, I suggest you go see some of my past ding long combo videos if you have not already. Miscellaneousaurus can also be put back into the graveyard with Cyframe Lord Omega if you choose to make it further down the combo. So with these three one card ding long engines, there's more to come in the future. For example, the Cybers type has a one card ding long option upon the start of Link format, and these one card ding long engines seem to happen somewhat frequently now and then. But with the three existing one card ding long engines, if you plan on not running all of them, it's good to know the strengths and weaknesses of each and which ones you should be running. So, the advantage of the Speedroid engine. The Speedroid engine's main advantage would be allowing you to make a complete play without the use of your normal summon, and that is through Speedroid Tatakomborg. Previously, this has been mostly used to summon the Phantom Knights of Breaksword, which allows you to pop any front row or back row card your opponent controls when going second and trying to break a board. So without using your normal summon and only one card, you get to pop a front row or a back row card. Recently, uh, Terratop and Tatakomborg, although their stats are very abysmal, 1200 and 600 are well enough to threaten Zodiac Trident, which has zero attack and zero defense. So without using your normal summon, you have two attacks against these 0-0 zero, zero Zodiac Exceeds. If your opponent puts their Dryden in defense mode, then 600 can also get over a Dryden with one Whiptail attached, which only gives the Dryden 400 defense. Also, when you already have access to tuners, the Speedroids are able to put two level 3 non-tuners on the field, pretty much for free. So if you already have a Jiao 2 in hand, no, Jiao 2 and Terra Top is pretty good. But yeah, ma mainly these rank 3 options without normal summoning is really good for going second. Now with the added threat of something as powerful as MX Saber Invoker, this has quite a high chance of baiting out your opponent's dimensional barrier on exceeds where when most of our power plays are synchros. The contract engine on the other hand, although seems strictly worse than the speed raid engine since you have to use your normal summon on Copernicus to make anything decent out of the dark contract with the gate, it's good to remember that dark contract of, with the gate can immediately search out DD Lamia. DD Lamia can be special summoned from the hand by sending the dark contract with the gate to the graveyard. In other words, dark contract with the gate can special summon out a level 1 tuner from your deck. The speed raid engine cannot do this, uh, since red eye dice can only be normal summoned after you search it with terra top. So the speed roids puts the speed roids special summons non tuners to the field. Dark contract with the gate can special summon a level 1 tuner. That's quite a decent thing to consider, especially when you're running engines such as the Zodiac engine, which is pr which are predominantly level 4. So that level 1 tuner special summon is going to let you summon Ding Long very easily, and even let you summon Ding Long if your initial play was stopped. So for example, if you opened Contract with the Gate and Zodiac Barrage, even if your normal summon gets stopped, these two cards are able to make Ding Long and more. Now the dinosaur engine, I'd say the main weakness of the dinosaur engine would be the amount of deck space it takes. For me personally, I'm running a 14 card dinosaur engine, which is pretty huge. However, you can shrink it down and only run the necessary pieces. So, whereas the DD engine consists of three good cards and two bad cards that you don't want to draw, which are not very good ratios, 3 to 2. The Speedroid engine, likewise, is a 3 to 2 ratio, although it's absolutely fine to run a 3 to 1 ratio if you only want the Ding Long capability, or if you only want the MX Saber Invoker capability, you can go down to 3 to 1 if you want, which is better than the DD engine. The Dinosaur engine has 
the best good cards to bad cards ratio. Now the reason for that is because of the existence of Fossil Dig. At the very best, you can get the dinosaur ratio to this triple fossil dig, triple soul ending over raptor, one miscellaneousaurus, one dracaeolo. This gives you six one card ding longs, so six good cards to only two uh, bad cards that you don't want to draw. You know, a six to two ratio is obviously better than the three to two ratios, making the dinosaur engine the most consistent engine. Miscellaneousaurus can also be used directly to summon Dracaeolo from your deck. So this is a similar interaction to how Dark Contract with the Gate can directly search DD Lamia and Special Summon it. If we drew Miscellaneousaurus, or if we've already used our normal summon and have a Fossil Dig in our hand, we don't have to use Fossil Dig to search the Soul Eating Oviraptor, we can use it to search the Miscellaneousaurus which lets us directly special summon our Dracaeolo from our deck without using our normal summon. Like I've said previously, having that free level 1 tuner special summon combos quite well with level 4 monsters such as the Zodiacs. Now, a weakness however is that the Dracaeolo is worse than the DD Lamia. DD Lamia has pretty decent stats with 1900 defense. Aeolo being 200-200 is not very nice. Drawing the Aeolo also means Miscellaneousaurus can't summon it since Miscellaneousaurus are only special summons from the deck. So it just becomes a vanilla level 1 tuner for you to normal summon. DD Lamia, on the other hand, if you open her as well as Corpinicus, you can discard Corpinicus to special summon Lamia from the hand, for example. So out of the Aeolo, Lamia, and Dice, Lamia would be the best one to draw, although you don't want to draw any of them. The dinosaur engine also deals with redundancy the best. So that means mo opening multiples of cards from the same engine. So for example, the DD engine, if I open a hand like this, uh, you know, these cards in the same hand, that's not very ideal. I shouldn't need to explain why this is pretty terrible. So the DD engine deals with redundancy the worst. Uh, likewise, with the Speedroid engine, if I open something like this, this is not terrible, uh, mainly because Teratop is a monster with 1200 attack, so at least you can do something with it, unlike Contract with the Gate. And it's a special summon as well, that can help you run over monsters such as Zodiac Trident. So this is not ideal, but much better than the DD engine, in terms of redundancy. Now, as for the Dinosaur engine, it really deals with it the best. Although you can't special summon Soul Eating Oviraptor like Teratop, Soul Eating Oviraptor is still 1800 attack. Same thing with Miscellaneousaurus, 1800 attack. So these as normal summons might actually be able to do something in games where you know, both players brick. Or if this is late game, top decking a 1800 normal summon, even if it's a vanilla, is vanilla, it's going to be better than a 1200 vanilla. But Soul Eating Oviraptor having the ability to search any dinosaur, including itself. So, Oviraptor for Oviraptor, which is your normal summon set for next turn. Next turn, you can Oviraptor for Oviraptor. These are all plays that could come up in very specific scenarios, especially very simplified game states. Having a 1-8 normal summon every turn guaranteed is definitely pretty good. Miscellaneousaurus is also going to make them immune for the turn. Uh, immune for that main phase. So if you open these two cards, you can Miscellaneousaurus discard, Miscellaneousaurus banish, summon Aeolo. It's kind of like how Apelio gives Ritual Beast 500 for the whole turn. Uh, Miscellaneousaurus protects dinosaurs even if they weren't on the field at the time when you activated Miscellaneousaurus, it lasts the whole entire main phase. So this Aeolo is protected from pretty much all from all activated effects. Next you can normal summon your Oviraptor, use its effect to search any dinosaur. Again this Oviraptor is protected so your opponent can't even solemn strike its effect. Uh, your opponent can't disrupt this play with Zodiac Dryden as well so Dryden can't pop either of these. Uh, and then you can just synchro straight into Dinglong and you know Dinglong isn't a dinosaur so this would be the first chance that they could use their Dryden to pop your guy. 
But you know, Dan Long already hit the field, it's trigger effect is going to get your search. There's no point popping a Ding Long, they can't even make it miss timing. If they bop it, you just float into another Yang Zing. You know, the overwrap the miscellaneous Saurus redundancy is really good, which is why personally I like to run triple miscellaneous Saurus. Uh, but we haven't talked about the possible targets that the Oviraptor can search yet. So the main secondary target I like to search with the Soul Eating Oviraptor is the Gillosaurus, which is going to extend this hand pretty far. So just playing this hand out again, Miscellaneous Saurus effects. Normal Summon Oviraptor searching Gillosaurus. Now Gillosaurus is especially good turn one, but going second. Quite a lot of decks don't have anything meaningful to special summon from the graveyard, Zodiacs being one of them. Uh, but obviously some decks do have quite threatening things that could be in the graveyard after their first turn. So it really depends on the deck how good this card is going second. But going first it's definitely really good because they don't have anything in the graveyard for them to special summon. Uh, but yeah you can just go ahead and drop the Gillosaurus on the field whenever you want. Now this field here is a pretty good field. You can go quite far beyond the Ding Long. So these two cards still make Ding Long. Most likely for 9 pillars if you're going first. Uh, you can make Omega right here, but I usually prefer to make Yazi by dropping Ding Long down to level 4. Omega is a good choice if you think your opponent is going to scoop game 1 and not reveal what deck they're playing. If you make the Omega, you get a chance to snipe a card out of their hand, and if they don't scoop at that point, it, there's a quite decent chance for you to know what deck they are playing. Some other cool options that our Soul Eating Oviraptor can search are Dogaran the Mad Flame Kaiju. I mean, normal summon search a Kaiju. You can out quite a lot of scenarios with just that. Soul Eating Oviraptor can also search Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. A pretty good main deck boss monster that outs scenarios as well as not care about things like dimensional barrier. 3500 is gonna run over a lot of stuff. It can also put everything face down and attack everything. And that's a quick effect as well, so you can use this guy's Book of Eclipse effect on your opponent's main phase. So a pretty good option to consider running. Other options such as Baby Ceracerus, which combos very well with Shrew Kings as well as Draconic Diagram in Maximum Crisis. The same is for the reverse, uh, if you have Fossil Dig or Baby Ceracerus, along with the Draconic Diagram or a True King that can pop the Baby Ceracerus, you can Special Summon a Soul Eating Oviraptor directly from your deck. So in other words, it's a one card thing long without using your normal summon, since the Oviraptor triggers on Special Summon searching your Miscellaneous Saurus and just doing the standard combos from there. Also I'm not going to go into too much detail for the post maximum crisis combos, but if you are planning to run a true king slash true draco slash draconic diagram combo, it obviously means you're running triple terraforming. So another potential tech option would be lost world. Uh, you can search this off terraforming if you need it. It combos really well with soul eating oviraptor. You activate Lost World, normal summon your soul in of your raptor. The Lost World is going to put a Jura Egg token to your opponent's side of the field. As long as that token is alive, your opponent can't target monsters on the field with card effect, except uh, that token. It's quite interesting, it means Barrage can't pop a monster, it means the Metal Foe Scales can't pop a monster. It can also be a potential way to break boards if they're bored. You know, if their monsters disrupt your plays by targeting your monsters. So, you know, Lost World might lead to some interesting interactions there. But most importantly, the Oviraptor has a second effect. It lets you pop a dinosaur anywhere on the field. The Jura Egg token is a dinosaur, so you can pop your opponent's token for Oviraptor, uh, which lets you summon a dinosaur from your graveyard in defense position. So let's just say the Soul Eating Oviraptor added Miscellaneousaurus, we discard the Miscellaneousaurus. Uh, now you have a dinosaur in the graveyard for Soul Eating Oviraptor to use its second effect. So we can use that to pop the Jura Egg token. But instead of summoning the Miscellaneousaurus out, out of our graveyard, we can use Lost World's effect to prevent the destruction of the token by destroying a dinosaur from our deck instead. So we can destroy Baby Ceracerus. It's the same thing, but yeah, it, it would trigger both of them and it allows us to 
Special or dinosaur from the deck? This depends on what dinosaurs exactly you're, you're running, but I'm not running anything, any fancy dinosaurs. So I'll probably summon something like Miscellaneousaurus, because uh, we're going to use the one in our graveyard this turn. Having a Miscellaneousaurus on the field as Synchro Material, uh, it's going to go to the grave, which gives us another mil Miscellaneousaurus for the next turn. Uh, that's a pretty cool interaction. So yeah, the Dinosaur Engine really has quite a decent amount of random options here and there. The potency of these one card dinglongs are pretty decent. You know, you can generate two negates off just one card or three negates off two cards. They also combo very well with things like Instant Fusion, which I won't talk about that much. Things like Soul Charge, things like Oasis of Dragon Souls. You know, these simple two card interactions, a one card thing along with any of these extenders can make a pretty decent field. So these are all very low investment, high impact plays, although not as high impact as resolving a gel 2, but going forward resolving a gel 2 is not going to be very reliable with the introduction of God Ash and Maximum Crisis. The final engine I want to show in this video is an update on the Zodiac engine. Since the semi-limitation of rap here, some of the combos that I've shown in my Zodiac Yang Zing video doesn't work anymore. Uh, so this is just a quick update on that. Although the introduction of Zodiac, although the introduction of Zodiac Chakra K9 means we can do all of those combos again, but just in this short period between now and the official release of Maximum Crisis, we can use this combo instead. This involving access to rap here and access to a level 1 tuner, although one or more of these has to be a special summon because we can't, you know, normal summon twice outside of Prague. Uh, so a hand like this uh, would be able to go into the combo. Yeah, we're gonna normal summon rap here, overlay into Broadball uh, effect to summon rap here, overlay into Broadball effect to search Tech Genus Warwolf. You can summon Warwolf whenever level 4 lower is special summon to your field. So if you don't have a way to special summon a level 4 or lower monster to your field, like I do in this case, you would have to do the broad ball search before the special summon of Zodiac Rap here. So you can summon the Warwolf of the special summon of Zodiac Rap here. But I did it in this order because I'm going to be special summoning Lamia. So discard Copernicus, special summon Lamia, and then Warwolf can trigger off that. Synchro summon Lamia and wrap here for Dinglong. Search nine pillars. Dinglong drops itself down to level four. You can keep it level five if you want to make Omega. As we've discussed before, I like to make Yazi. Dinglong floats. If we're going first, we would float down into a Chiwin. Uh, this lets us Tiger Mortar. Trident and pop the Chi Win. Chi Win floats into Suwani. Uh, like this, we have access to the Chi Win in the graveyard for our opponent's turn. So we can bring it back after we negate something with Nine Pillars on our opponent's turn. Most likely popping the Yazi, uh, bringing back the Chi Win, bringing back the BN from the deck. So yeah, after negating something, we still have a Dryden pop on our opponent's turn. We still can make the Dinglong on our opponent's turn to search something like Path. And then we can use Bian's effect on our opponent's turn to Synchro Summon and to Baxia Spinning 2. Uh, and Dinglong would also trigger summoning any Yangzing really. Doesn't really matter at this point. Exactly same as the combo I've shown in the Zodiac Yangzing video with three rap pairs, except with two rap here and a tech genus warwolf. Now this does get replaced by Lyca after Maximum Crisis. Maximum Crisis pre-orders are now available on YGOsingles.com so if you're planning to grab cards from Maximum Crisis be sure to consider buying from YGOsingles.com and don't forget to use the discount code for 5% off which is NY333YGO. Join me in the next video once I get 
the maximum crisis cars myself. I'll probably make some videos on that as well.